Hello, my name is Matt and welcome to Can I Kick It? A new freestyle footbag series here on Passback. In this short series, we'll be focusing on footbags themselves and covering topics such as footbag construction, purchasing bags, and caring for them. And I say we quite literally this time because when it comes to footbags, I'm kind of a big dumb jock who only understands the bare minimum. So for this series, I will be joined by another member of the Passback team, my good friend Ivan, who has been a respected stitcher in the freestyle footbag community for about eight years. If you're wondering, do you really need a special bag to play freestyle footbag? The answer is similar to the one we addressed about shoes. With enough scaling up to a certain point, you can get away with playing with pretty much any footbag and plenty of things that are not footbags. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> However, in order to have the most fun, play your best, and make the most progress, you're going to want to play with proper equipment that fits your preferences. So, in this first episode of Can I Kick It?, Ivan and I are going to go over what makes a good footbag and give you enough understanding of their construction in order to make informed purchases. Also, we're only going to be covering how the various characteristics of a bag affect playability, but if you're interested in learning how to stitch a bag yourself, Ivan has a great tutorial video that we'll link to in the description. First, we need to define what a good freestyle footbag is. Should be able to find one in here. Everybody has their preferences, but generally players like to use bags that stall well, fly through the air evenly and predictably, and are easy to see when you use them. We also want a bag that's going to break in well, which is exactly like when you buy a new pair of shoes that are initially stiff but loosen up with time and use. With these few qualities in mind, let's discuss the five most important characteristics of a bag. Panels, size, material, weight, and fill. We're going to start from the outside of the bag with the aspect that primarily defines how a bag looks, its panels. Freestyle foot bags normally have 32 or 14 panels, but the number can vary quite a bit. Panel numbers can go as low as one and technically as high as you want, but realistically they top out at 92 or 120 for commercially available bags. As for colors, a common pattern is to alternate with two or three colors, but some bags offer a more artistic approach using several colors, patterns like swirls or stars, spikes, or even full character designs like these bags made by Hanya Mitskiewicz. So more panels is better, right? Well, it really depends on your style of play and several other factors, but in general, the number of panels in a freestyle footbag does affect the way a bag plays. Let's say that all other aspects of the bag are the same. A bag with more panels will generally hold its shape better and fly through the air more consistently than one with fewer panels. This also means that bags with fewer panels tend to be easier to stall right from the start, while bags with more panels require a bit more break-in time to reach the same level. This difference is most evident with certain tricks that require the bag to pop off your foot cleanly like pixies, or to stall well like spins from your clipper surface. These characteristics are why 32 panels is considered to be a good middle ground for the number of panels in a freestyle footbag. The next aspect of a footbag to discuss is the size. Most of the aspects we're describing come down to a lot of personal preference, but size preference is probably the one that varies the most from player to player and is the most contentious. Some players like super small bags, which for very high level play can have some effect, while others prefer larger bags that are more visible. Bag size comes up a lot in debates around competition and public viewing of footbag with arguments that smaller bags are better for players while larger bags are better for spectators. Interestingly enough, despite the strong personal preference associated with bag size, it alone does not really affect the actual playing characteristics of a footbag. Sure, larger bags might seem a bit easier to stall and track as you play, but can also get similar results from a smaller bag if you tweak some of the other characteristics that define how a footbag plays. From my experience as somebody who makes foot bags, people tend to prefer bags that range between 40 and 50 millimeters in diameter for general play, and larger sizes for busking or public shows. Now, naturally, this preference also varies a bit with time, and will change slowly as the sport evolves. Picking up a bag, the first thing you encounter is the material of the panels. Bags are made from all kinds of materials, but generally thinner materials provide more feel and quicker break-in time, while thicker materials last longer. 
Thinner materials are more prone to holes and general wear and tear, but if materials are too thick, a bag might never properly break in. These days, most professional freestyle foot bags are made from a synthetic suede called Ultra Suede, or a mix of other similar materials like Alcantara, Amaretta, and Micro Suede. These synthetic fabrics were originally used for automobile and furniture upholstery, and they hold up well to kicking and the occasional scrape against the ground, which happens to all of us. The material usually has a fused polyester base, which holds up well to the wear and tear a foot bag endures, outlasting the woven varieties more commonly found in everyday clothing. The textured surface of the fabric provides good grip with most shoe surfaces and remains reasonably consistent when exposed to dirt and sweat. Less expensive footbags tend to use less durable materials like fake leather, which doesn't hold its shape as well and wears out quickly, or they use real leather, which requires a lot of effort to break in and does not play consistently after it gets wet. The next thing you feel with a bag in your hand is its weight. In comparison to random objects around your house, you probably think that all foot bags are lightweight. But within a small range, bags can actually be too light or too heavy. With a bag that's too light, you won't be able to feel it on your feet, which makes it hard to play well due to a lack of feedback. For any fellow musicians out there, it's like trying to play your instrument without being able to hear yourself. A bag that's too heavy can actually become tiresome to play with, requiring more energy than necessary in each contact, which can add up over the course of an entire session. The most common weight of a bag is 60 to 65 grams, but you'll see players' preferences range from 55 to 70 grams. The weight of a bag is highly dependent on the final aspect, its fill. Fill materials vary widely, with less expensive bags tending to use things like sand, plastic pellets, or even beans, while more expensive bags use various kinds of metals. Fill is by far the aspect of bags that I know the least about, so I'm going to let Ivan take it from here. The material, shape, and size of the fill on a foot bag make a big difference in how it plays. Small, dense, granular fill like stainless steel or sand will level out well inside the panels, causing the bag to stall easily. However, if you go too fine in size, the bag will feel mushy, and some of the fill will eventually leak out between the stitches and all over your playing surface, which gets annoying really, really quickly. Bigger, less dense fill like plastic pellets or glass beads will help the bag hold its round shape better, but also will make the bag bounce and roll more when it's stalled. The density of the fill also determines how much room it has to move around inside the bag when the bag rotates and tumbles as you kick it. Having about a 40-50% to 50 fill ratio by volume is a good level to aim for. Since bags need to be washed every few sessions, fill material should be water resistant and should not stain the fabric because nobody likes to play with a dirty grey bag. In general, stainless steel balls or discs around 2mm in size are the perfect base fill and can be supplemented with lower density material filler to make the bag perform in a way that complements your preferred style of play. That wraps up the basic characteristics of a standard freestyle foot bag, but there's a few other varieties that I want to mention quickly. There are fire and glow bags, both of which illuminate the bag and put on a great show for a crowd. There are also show bags, which are extra large monocolor bags designed with spectator visibility in mind. And finally, there are chainmail bags, which require more precision than standard bags, making them good for training. All right, so now that you know the basics of a freestyle foot bag, it's time to make your first purchase. There are a lot of options in online shops out there, so in episode two of Can I Kick It, Ivan and I will take a look at several entry-level bags in order to give you our best recommendation for an inexpensive but quality first freestyle foot bag. I'd also like to say thank you for the feedback we've received so far, and please let us know if we missed something in this episode that you'd like to see covered further. Thanks, and see you in episode two.